We're also watching semis this morning, semiconductors. Analysts over at KeyBank, they boosted their price target on chipmaker NVIDIA from $130 to $180 over robust demand for its AI chips. The firm also upped its price target on Micron from $160 to $165 here. It was really kind of a sweeping analysis of the broader chip segment here, but you know, kind of coming back to what they were uh, using as their methodology, talking about this cloud instance tracker and how they use this as essentially data analytics, tracking the proliferation of semiconductor architectures by region based on instances available to purchase in the public cloud. All that said, they looked across AMD, NVIDIA, Google, Amazon, and others as well here, trying to get some clues uh, with correlation to how much these companies are spending and when within their various architectures, it will actually pay fruits for their business too. Yeah, exactly. I think this all just comes down to demand and, and they lay it out uh, pretty uh, just point blank in this report thing that the AI demand continues unabated. That traditional server demand is actually improving. You mentioned uh, some of those uh, larger cap tech names there. The fact that the server supply chain feedback indicates that demand for traditional server demand continues to improve. Most of that demand is from those U.S. cloud providers that Brad was just mentioning. But they also go on to say that they are also seeing sustained demand from China, also moderating, improving demand here within enterprise. So all set up here for a bullish couple of quarters ahead of what potentially could be here for NVIDIA. When you take a look at the stock, yes, we have seen Maybe some, a, a bit of a reset maybe in Wall Street expectations or exactly what current valuations are after that 10 for 1 uh, stock split. But again, the chart just shows, says it all. Year to date, we're still looking at gains of nearly 160%. Yeah. And when you take a look at this momentum, it's pretty much consensus on the street that a lot of this is not going to slow down anytime soon. Yeah, a slight ding after. Right, right. And so, so the thesis largely remaining intact. A slight ding because of some of the insider selling that took place, mm -hmm. but more largely the trend remains. Mains, and especially with what KeyBank is talking about here within the demand profile here, not seeing any signs of a demand pause as demand for H100 remains robust, they say. It's not surprising that NVIDIA doesn't want to lose the Chinese market as it has attempted to develop less powerful chips that would get around the trade restrictions. A recent report indicates that NVIDIA is expected to make a hopping $12 billion from China this year. If you ask investors in NVIDIA stock about the biggest risks to the company, many will mention the U.S.-China trade war and how it forbids NVIDIA from selling its chips to companies operating in China. The Chinese market used to account for as much as a quarter of NVIDIA's total data center revenue, and the company made $10 billion from China in the previous fiscal year. In spite of the sanctions, which we will discuss in today's video along with how this may impact NVIDIA stock, first make sure you subscribe to our channel if you want to stay up to date on the most recent news about NVIDIA and the stock market. We post updates on the biggest shifts and catalysts in the market, so click the follow button to ensure you don't miss the most recent updates. Now let's get back to today's video. You know, you have to think about this uh, in a bifurcated way, you know, on one hand, uh, the big LM models are the game of the big players, right? So you need a huge amount of financing power and uh, 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 chip computing power. So as you mentioned, uh, the, the, because of U.S. sanctions, you know, China has little access to the, uh, to the, to the GPUs, NVIDIA, among others. Uh, and also the companies like Alibaba, uh, you mentioned, you know, are struggling in the global capital markets, right? So, so they have issues with the financing capabilities as well as the computing capabilities. Uh, but it's, but for, 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 for the same reason, this forced these companies to go into uh, uh, applications uh, of AI, you know, that, that means that is the actual commercialization of the LM models. So go beyond the, the model themselves. So in, in the case uh, of China market, uh, when you look at the, the players there, uh, actually uh, only the biggest ones are still in that type of game. For most of them, they are into the application side. So they focus on efficiency, uh, edge computing, uh, so, so, that, so that there's a, a less requirement of computing power and also smaller model. So, so actually in China, 2024, it's a year of small models. In the upcoming months, NVIDIA is expected to ship over a million of its new H20 chips to China, as per a recent report by Financial Times. 
These chips are made to circumvent U.S. prohibitions on selling AI processors to Chinese enterprises. As you may already be aware, the U.S. is prohibiting American chip makers from selling their most powerful chips to China out of concern that Beijing may use them to develop more potent AI systems for use in the military. This has had a significant impact on NVIDIA's sales in the country. However, analysts from research firm Semi Analysis noted that this figure is almost twice as many as Huawei is expected to sell of its rival product, the Ascend 910B, which is made in China. Since China once accounted for 25% of NVIDIA's data center sales, the company's recent earnings call revealed that the country's sales have dropped to a mid-single-digit percentage. This is a significant decline, and NVIDIA is still expected to earn a lot of money from China, which bodes well for the company. We'll discuss what this means for NVIDIA stock, so don't miss it. Hello everyone and welcome back to Investing Tutorial. NVIDIA up by about 1.5% pre-market. Two firms raising their price targets yesterday on demand for the Blackwell AI chip. Joining us now is another analyst who is also bullish on the stock, Vivek Arya, Bank of America Securities Senior Semiconductors Analyst. Vivek, great to have you with us. Good um, morning, I was, I was reading your note from uh, just a couple weeks ago or last week. <laughs> it could be. Um, it's saying that NVIDIA is relatively under-owned, which I thought was really surprising. The assumption is that you know, the MAG7, particularly NVIDIA, is probably the most owned trade on Wall Street. What have you found? Sure. Thanks, Melissa. I think the, the first thing to realize is that uh, we just went through uh, what is probably just phase one of a uh, large language model uh, deployment. Now we are going to start uh, phase two. Uh, that's when we will see a lot more optimized models, both getting larger in scope uh, to increase their accuracy but then also getting a lot smaller and optimized. And that requires a very flexible set of hardware, software, uh, silicon. And uh, that is, I think, the ecosystem NVIDIA is uh, pioneered and created. And they are just at the start of uh, their Gen 2 product, uh, Blackwell, uh, which will really start to uh, kickstart this phase two of AI. So I think that's very important to realize that even though the numbers have gotten very big, we are still at the start of uh, this deployment phase. When it comes to ownership, uh, what our strategy team, uh, led by Savita, have uh, found out is that if you take a snapshot of uh, active uh, long-only fund managers across the U.S., that, uh, yes, a lot of them own NVIDIA, but the weightage with which they own NVIDIA stock relative to its weight in the S&P 500 is essentially just market weight, um, right? So even though it is one of the fastest-growing stocks in, in our uh, coverage and across uh, technology, it's not actually a, among the largest holdings in a number of uh, actively managed funds. So we do think there is scope for both a better earnings upside and, of course, a lot more uh, weighting in investor portfolios. What do you, how do you see NVIDIA trading for the remainder of the year in, in that in the first half of the year, it was all about this massive CapEx spending <coughs> raise by the hyperscalers? That was a huge um, you know, boost to the AI trade in NVIDIA in particular. And then you had Jensen Huang in the last earnings, uh, you know, raising Q2 guidance on the old chip, but also saying that there's going to be plenty of Blackwell revenue for the rest of the year. So they seem to be raising their own bar. Um, what else do you want to hear in order to sort of keep this story going? Sure. So today, <laughs> you know, the most reliable spender on the planet is the U.S. cloud customer, right? They are in a race to deploy these large language uh, models. They have just gotten started. And it's interesting that if you double click on that, uh, the most um, uh, useful models that are out there, one has been developed by a startup, um, right, OpenAI, and the other has been developed by a company, Meta, uh, which is not even a cloud uh, service provider. So that's why I think it's, it's um, uh, you know, uh, interesting to see when people try and predict the peak of this uh, cycle when some of the largest technology companies on the planet don't even have a large language model that is rolled out and is being adopted in uh, full scale. So that's uh, point number one. I think point number two is that uh, the demand which started from the cloud providers, I think will slowly start to expand into enterprises. There are a number of enterprises across a number of verticals, uh, whether it's healthcare, whether it's financial services, uh, transportation, retail. They also want to extract insights uh, from all the data that they have. And a lot of times they want to do it on premise. And number three, look at the demand that is just starting from all the sovereign uh, countries, right? Each one who wants to have their own a set of large language models that are optimized for their own language, their own uh, culture. So because of the diversity of demand, 
is why we think the diversity of needs across NVIDIA's uh, product stack, whether it's Ampere, whether it's Hopper, and now it's uh, Blackwell. Uh, so that I think is the key, that the demand is a lot more uh, diverse, uh, and uh, that is why you need a diversity on the product stack to address it. Carefree A20 chip costs between $12,000 and $13,000, according to semi-analytical analysts, indicating that NVIDIA is expected to generate sales of up to $12 billion. This would surpass the $10 billion the company made from its entire China business in the previous fiscal year, which included selling graphics chips to PC gamers and other products. It's noteworthy that despite having lower performance than the chips NVIDIA can sell in the U.S., the H20 chip is currently being supplied in large quantities and is becoming popular with Chinese consumers, according to analysts at Morgan Stanley and Semi-Analysis. Moreover, Semi-Analysis Dylan Patel stated that although the H20's capabilities aren't as strong as Huawei's 910B on paper, since the majority of Chinese AI companies have built their models on top of NVIDIA's ecosystem and software, switching to Vuai's infrastructure would be time-consuming and expensive. Therefore, we can say that NVIDIA is set to make a massive comeback in the Chinese market, which would definitely reflect positively on NVIDIA stock. In addition, he estimated that Huawei would sell about 550,000 chips over the same period while the company and its manufacturing partners are still struggling to produce the complex chips in high enough volumes to meet demand. Even though the company's stock is currently struggling, NVIDIA is expected to dominate the second half of 2024. With that in mind, now is the right time to invest heavily in NVIDIA stock. Let's find out. But first, thank you if you made it this far into the video. These videos take a lot of time and effort to make, so if you enjoyed them, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Right? If you believe this is really the super cycle that I believe that it is, you know, the consensus estimate for next year for NVIDIA, I think, is around $3.50 per share. You're way ahead of that. We're, you know, we're, we're closer to $5 a share. We've been ahead of the consensus estimate since the fall of 22. And what I say to my team, if the numbers are going up, the stock is going up because the rest of consensus will have to raise their numbers. You're now, like 40% above the street. Again. Again, uh, there are numbers on the buy side that are as high as five dollars a share. So if you if you go to five bucks and you place a 30 times earnings multiple on that, right, you, you, you get to one hundred and fifty dollars a share. We're not that high. I don't mm. think you need to be that high to own the market leader in A.I. But I will tell you this, you know, we uh, part of our team was in Taipei last week and you listen to what Jensen is doing. We see the orders for GB 200. We see the orders for the B 200. Nothing is slowing down, Scott. Because they have to place orders five years in advance for these products. They have to go find power. They have to find data centers in order to build these supercomputers. And so everybody has been climbing this wall of worry. Remember, I was on when the stock went to 250, and everybody said sell. And then the stock went to 400, and everybody said sell. Why? Because it went up. They weren't doing the work on what was also going up, which was revenue and earnings. Josh Brown, uh, I think everybody who watches our program, at least at this point, knows your affection for this name, which you've owned for a long period of time. But what about this optimism that Brad is, is sharing with us? And when you ask the question, is it too much? Is it too far too fast? The suggestion here? No. Uh, look, I, I continue to feel that the biggest risk to the market is all of a sudden somebody pulls back and decides they're going to get off the carousel of just endlessly building and buying. Uh, but it hasn't happened yet. And until it does, the, the problem with NVIDIA, it, it never makes it easy because it's not expensive enough to say, okay, that's it, I've had enough. To Brad's point, the fundamentals have been outpacing the share price growth uh, miraculously for the last few years. And at some point that may change. At some point we may just see a, a runaway train that is no longer justified by what the forward earnings are going to be. But we are not at that juncture yet. So it's a, really tough, it's a really tough name for a lot of people because it's not egregious. It's not Cisco in 1999. Uh, and, and quite frankly, one of the underappreciated parts of the NVIDIA story, and maybe Brad wants to weigh in on this, people think it's just chip sales. And then like, okay, I hope they buy more chips. Once you put these chips in, you are now spending money with NVIDIA as a customer 
for the foreseeable future. You've made a huge investment, and now you're involved with their software, with their environment, with their services. In, in a way, it is very similar to Apple, but from a B2B perspective, a while back, a lot of investors would have advised purchasing Vidya stock for retirement portfolios and stated it was a company to own for life. However, at the moment, the stock is retreating, causing many to doubt. Even though the company's bubble is popping, there are still several reasons why Nvidia's stock has additional upside. The global data center market is expected to reach $418 billion by 2030, rising at a compound annual growth rate of 9.6% between 2023 and 2030. NVIDIA's flagship AI GPU sales are reported in this category, and since NVIDIA controls 80% of the market, this is the key segment in which it operates. Additionally, the market for generative AI is expected to grow to be worth $1 trillion by 2030. According to many analysts, NVIDIA has already profited from this and is expected to do so in the future. In fact, the company recently reported that its data center revenue increased by 427% year over year to $22.6 billion. Additionally, investors should be aware that tech companies are purchasing as many GPUs as they can acquire in order to train their AI models, for example. By year's end, 350,000 of NVIDIA's H100 chips will be included into Facebook parent Meta's computer infrastructure. In addition, NVIDIA has a long history of providing shareholders with above-average growth and returns. However, its current growth is phenomenal, with revenue rising 262% year-over-year in the most recent quarter. While it is unlikely that the company will continue to see revenue triple annually, investors who are patient with their investment decisions over the coming years may see satisfactory returns because NVIDIA will continue to innovate with new products and AI solutions to drive long-term growth. This is demonstrated by the company's new Blackwell platform, for which demand is expected to exceed supply in the near future. In addition, the company anticipates revenue in the fiscal second quarter of $28 billion, a 107% increase from the previous year. Given this level of demand, I believe it is a no-brainer to invest in NVIDIA stock. What do you think? Is it a good buy at the current price? Please share your thoughts in the comments section. Don't forget to share your valuation of NVIDIA.